Uh, hi, welcome to my presentation. I'm really glad to see you all here. Um, as Kurt said already, I am Peter Petrick from based in Itomichel, Czech Republic, and I'm QGIS Core developer, mostly mesh layers, uh, 3D, and other stuff. Uh, I'm from Ultra Consulting. We are based in UK, but have a distributed workspace all over the Europe. Uh, we are 10 years of QGIS contributions, to QGIS 3D, point clouds, and mesh layers. Saber has a uh, presentation on mesh layers following me and Martin about 3D. We do a migration to open source support and training, and of course, we provide uh, merging maps, product, and cloud. So, what is merging maps? Uh, you may know it formally, it was input app and merging, two products, and we tried to rebrand it last year. It was not that easy as I thought. It's very difficult to rebrand, and the most difficult is pick a color. So we pick the color, that's good, and now we are called merging maps. And uh, I'm very glad that I talked with many of you I see in our stand below. Um, why it is so popular? Because we have many people teaching merging maps in their universities because it's very simple. It requires the application requires no training, and at the same time, it's everything you need for a field survey, and you don't, don't need a GIS experts to do your field survey. You just need someone who is really good at QGIS to set up a project. But the app is very, very simple. And it's very popular in universities because where else you can play with your mobile, and teacher will not be afraid uh, because it's mobile app. So you can have it on apps, App Store or Google Play. So if you get bored, scan it, and you can play with it. I will not be not offended. Uh, what is Emerging Maps? It's a whole ecosystem uh, based on your field surveys. Uh, it also has a component to track and store your data on the cloud or on your self-deployment of a server. Um, it also does a versioning and uh, history and tracking of the changes, like who did which change on your project. It has very close integration with QGIS. Uh, we can even say it's like based on QGIS. It's really running QGIS on your mobile. So it's not like integration. It's like really QGIS on your mobile. And it has a very nice plugin, so it's, it should work everything smoothly from your QGIS. And it's all full open source. Uh, you can scan a GitHub for merging maps, GitHub repository. Like all code is mostly MIT or AGPL or GPL. Um, so what, what, what are the, the big benefits of the, of the system? First of all, it, ran, it has the same QGIS core library as you run on desktop. So if your project looks somehow on a desktop, Okay. Uh, somehow on desktop, it uh, looks the same on the mobile. Uh, so you don't need to do some transformation of your styles and everything like that. It supports a very much range of uh, formats similar to your, to your desktop. Uh, it has, comes with very powerful forms. Uh, you see there are relations, gallery of images, all possible widgets you can imagine that you can set up in QGIS. And uh, they are very intuitive. So as I said, uh, in your field, you don't need uh, to worry that uh, your surveyors need some training. Um, on the left, we see uh, how to share the project. So you have a menu similar to what you are used with other uh, sharing platforms like Google Drive. You can share your project with your colleagues or, or your team, or you can explore some projects. So it's a very easy permission system where you can set up who can read or who can write to your project or who can see it. Uh, this is a picture of how it looks in QGIS. Uh, you will have a processing toolbox, the toolbox for, for at the top, and then also browser integration. Again, you see, you see my, your project, your project is shared with you, and exploration. Uh, this is how the server looks like, um, and you can see that it tracks the changes of your project, and if you go through the menus, you will, you will see who did the change, when, which features were changed, and which attributes were changed. So it's kind of nice to, uh, to use it for tracking uh, progress of your project or analysis if everything goes well. Uh, it has a permission system, as I mentioned, so you can set up all this stuff. 
we are doing some case studies, and uh, it's very popular also in uh, uh, non-profit organization. This is a case study from fauna and flora done in Vietnam, and they were uh, monitoring uh, given population, which is one of the most threatened primates in the world, and uh, they have two teams of six to nine members going twice per month in a field, uh, completely offline in the jungle, and then they go back to the office, synchronize, everything merge together automatically, and in the office they can pros uh, proceed in QGIS, use QGIS analysis tool to produce reports, analysis, and do their research. So you see a real, real world example of how merging is used, uh, merging maps is used in the field. Um, okay, so what else is in this ecosystem? First of all, we have integrations, uh, like if you have PostGIS, that we have various tools like DBSync that can synchronize your merging maps project with your PostGIS database. So it's both directions. So you can still have your final data in PostGIS and use merging maps. We have MediaSync, which allows you to automatically transfer photos from merging maps to your drive, for example, S3 bucket, and empty your photos or backup your photos to place where you want to see them. We have other tools. We have C++ and Python client. So many of our clients use uh, this uh, Python client to create some extra validations or extra step in their workflows and uh, produce, for example, web maps. Uh, what's the backbone of the whole system? The backbone is the MIT C++ library GeoDiff. It's the same as a library diff or tool diff on a Linux, if you know it, but it's for geo packages and Postgres, Postgres databases. So you see here that you have one base original file, you have two surveyors in the field, and both, one of them changed the attribute of a species, other one changed the age, and both of them at a point. The geo diff can automatically detect these changes, and when you are back in the office and sync, it can change the uh, uh, final table, so it's merged together um, automatically. And it works very nice if you don't change the, the structure of the tables. So, and it's also tracked in the history, as we've seen before. Uh, what about the community? Uh, we have a Slack channel that we started, I think, half a year ago, and now we have 500 people there. Uh, talking about uh, how they use merging maps, asking questions uh, directly to developers and sharing their experience. We have also a newsletter MailChimp. We send every month uh, updates what in the product. And uh, to imagine the size of the our cloud we run, it's uh, 50,000 QGIS projects that are hosted at the moment. Uh, we are two years in full production. We had, like, last eight months, we have eight input app releases, nine plugin releases, 11 server releases, and we have something like six full-time people, seven full-time people working on Dutra on these projects uh, exclusively. Um, I'm talking about the cloud solution. You can either deploy your own solution on your servers, or you can use uh, our uh, deployment that uh, is free for personal use and for academic use, and uh, we have high discounts for non commercial projects, and f for commercial projects, it's, the price is not per seat, but for storage. So it's kind of affordable for commercial projects too, if you don't want to uh, handle on your server. Okay, so what about the features? Okay, uh, so what features we developed in the last few months? Uh, Okay, so first of all, I want to uh, say something about the, uh, the plugin updates. Uh, the users had a problem that when they synchronized to the application, they only found uh, on the field that something is not working. So we created a lot of validations for you. So when you click Sync button in your QGIS, it will show you all the warnings we found on your projects, and they will allow you to go directly to documentation, understand the problem, or fix it. So when there are no warnings, you are sure that the project will work on your, on your mobile, so there are no problems. Also, it shows you the, the changes that you did uh, on your project. Uh, uh, this is a also change in the plugin that uh, Alexander 
developed and it's a list of the changes. So similarly as you've seen on the web, here in the plugin you can do a difference between various versions of your project and you can visually see what changed on the map and also in the attribute table. The, the, the green lines were added, the red one was deleted and the yellow one was modified attribute. So you can also do some reports for your managers or for, for someone who is auditing the, the survey, who did which, which changes. Uh, now we have some uh, recent work on application. For example, we added a possibility to splitting of the, of the uh, data, snapping, which was also caused by people in the field that they want to snap to um, electric poles, for example. Uh, and also this one, which, which uh, I'm really proud of, is uh, autosync, which uh, means that you can set up in your project that any time there is any change in your project, it will automatically send the data to the server. So this uh, was requested by uh, some users that uh, wanted to make sure that people not forget to synchronize back in the office. They, were not, they, they said, OK, if, we, if the server changed the project, we want automatically send it to the server so we have a new version. So this is the autosync, autosync feature. And also, it has a nice button now on the canvas where you can immediately synchronize your project. Uh, also, we worked a lot on uh, external GPS. So we have support for most of the external GPS uh, uh, hardware at the moment. Uh, and also, you have GPS panel where you can see all the data from your external GPS. For Android, it works uh, uh, natively. So you can select your Bluetooth uh, GPS external uh, antenna directly in the phone. For iOS, you need to have a mock location, but also it works. Uh, connected to this external GPS, we also added a stakeout, uh, both for uh, long mode for navigation to the point on the map, and also when you have external GPS, you can directly precisely stake out your point on the map, so you know it's the same point as last time, for example. I want to talk a bit about uh, very common questions about this uh, merging maps uh, solution, and it's how to handle pictures. Because when you are in the field, very often you have a lot of pictures from surveyors. So we have thought about this problem and developed a few ways how to make your life easy in the office. One way is selective synchronization, which means that the surveyors will not fetch the data of other surveyors. So you will only take your pictures, send to the server, but not get the pictures of others to your phone. The other one is media sync. I already mentioned that one, where you can take the photos from merging map server and put it on S3 bucket or Google Drive or some other storage type. So it doesn't fill up your merging map storage. Then there is an automatic resizing of images that you can now set up in a plugin. And when the surveyor takes a photo, it automatically scales down. Uh, then we have image gallery where you can link multiple pictures to in one feature and also we can extract the exit information from the pictures to store it in the attribute table. We did uh, tons of work that is not visible but I want to mention it because we spent a lot of time during the last half year to improve robustness and stability mostly for because uh, we had a project we had hundreds of files and also uh, thousands of versions so, we make, so we're trying to make the system so robust that it can handle any big project that is any versions. And also, we're working on syncing of large files and all these exceptionally big and production products that you can imagine that if someone is using it, it happens. Uh, I want to talk about the new features about roadmap. Um, first of all, we will have very soon, very soon new community edition release that uh, will have uh, all the work from last year with tons of bug fixes for merging maps community edition and uh, we decided uh, to uh, switch to workspaces which is other big, big task which will help you a lot when you evaluate the merging maps and want to invite the rest of your team so it will be a lot of easier to invite your colleagues to your project it will uh, Rework 
interesting stuff. Ah, okay. Uh, also, we are working on map overviews, background maps, flexible permissions. So, for example, you can allow only users to edit data in the field and not in the QGIS. Public web maps, and uh, we try to move to different packaging system. Uh, thank you very much for, for uh, listening to me. Join our chat, and uh, there is a link if you want, and I'm open to questions. Thank you.